okay we'll come let's start with this key number second uh, two so the key number two is secondary adrenal insufficiency mostly atrogenic so suppose this is adrenal gland adrenal gland consists of three layers okay zona glomerulosa which secretes aldosterone and zona fasciculata fasciculata which can secretes glucocorticoids and zona reticularis this secretes the androgens okay so the aldosterone what it does is it will uh, absorb the sodium into the blood suppose this is a kidney tubules here are lying some 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 of the cells are present over here so what they do is when aldosterone acts on them they absorb sodium into the cell okay and they dump out potassium okay this cell is called as principal cells principal cells and there are another bunch of cells which are present over here what they do is when aldosterone acts on them they are called as alpha intercalated cells alpha intercalated cells so what they do is they they dump out uh, hydrogen ions acid okay they dump out hydrogen ions and they absorb bicarbonate okay leading to uh, metabolic alkalosis when they act okay uh, sorry when they when the aldosterone acts on the kidney tubules so these are um, all the association and with sodium comes the water as well okay so there you can have uh, much fluid and which will result into hypertension and uh, because the aldosterone promotes the throwing of hydrogen ion into the urine and absorbs bicarbonate so it will lead to metabolic alkalosis and the next one is glucocorticoids okay the glucocorticoids uh, is an emergency hormone so it helps uh, to upregulate the receptors of the arteries increasing the effects of uh, norepinephrine on the arteries that's why it causes hypertension okay and uh, it also acts uh, uh, it also promotes gluconeogenesis okay gluconeogenesis uh, which we need in emergency situation and it will uh, change the amino acids convert the amino acids and lipids into glucose which will be needed in emergency situation the next is androgen okay androgen you know is a uh, epi uh, in, uh, which is the precursor molecule uh, epi andro endosterone okay and this this is converted into testosterone Okay, testosterone and testosterone in males uh, is responsible for the um, secondary sexual characteristics which is the beard or uh, underarms uh, or uh, all the pubic hairs okay and in female uh, it is responsible for uh, but the quantity is very less okay as compared to the testes but in female uh, the little quantity which is produced by the uh, zona reticularis of the um, adrenal gland it promotes the growth of uh, pubic hair okay under arms and uh, and uh, axillary ears and to what next yeah it also um, promotes the libido okay that's it so if we of, uh, so if we try to uh, try to damage the uh, or any disease 
damages the adrenal gland okay so what will happen these three years will not be working properly okay so if there is deficiency of aldosterone okay then then you will have uh, hyperkalemia okay there will be hyperkalemia potassium will be high and sodium will be low there will be hyponatremia and along with it there will be metabolic acidosis why there will be metabolic acidosis because uh, the aldosterone was promoting hydrogen ion to dump into the urine but uh, because of the lack of aldosterone that hydrogen ion, ion will remain in the blood and there will be no further uh, bicarbonate absorption so it will lead to acidosis and uh, there will be no there will be not much of the water absorbed along with the sodium so it can lead to hypotension and as i said uh, next will be hypoglycemia when glucocorticoid is not uh, present then it can it will not be producing gluconeogenesis okay and uh, along with it also does the vasoconstriction uh, type of role so that will not be maintained so the patients may go into orthostatic hypotension okay because of the leg glucocorticoids and along with it uh, there will be weakness and fatigability um, and along with it uh, there will be skin hyperpigmentation okay so what is skin hyperpigmentation so as you know pituitary gland uh, releases to uh, a substance which is called as uh, propio melanocyte propio melanocyte uh, sorry propio propio melanocortin and this can be converted into acth or msh so whenever there is deficiency of adrenal gland hormones uh, which is endosterone blue codifiers or endosterone so pituitary gland try to compensate it by increasing the amount of acth so when acth is being produced along with it msh is also produced this msh will go in it will lead to increase in hyperpigmentation okay that's it so whenever a patient has another strategy when a patient has adrenal insufficiency so his adrenal is not working his adrenal might not be working because of the two ways okay if it is primary if it is primary then it is called as waterhouse frederiksen syndrome waterhouse waterhouse frederiksen syndrome what happens is that uh, there is an acute uh, primary adrenal insufficiency why because of the uh, adrenal hemorrhage okay and this uh, often is uh, the situation present in children okay and then the other one is mm, the other one this one uh, this uh, this is caused by the uh, nasiria meningitis septicemia or uh, uh, dic can also cause hemorrhage into the adrenal glands so what happens is that uh, adrenal glands lost their functionality the next one is this is called as primary adrenal insufficiency the next one is secondary adrenal insufficiency uh, it is also referred as uh, to addison disease the secondary one is also called as addison okay addison disease it can be because of the tuberculosis in developing world and it is uh, it can be caused by autoimmune okay. the mechanism is not known but most of the developed countries is having autoimmune problems and tb is in underdeveloped countries this is called a secondary adrenal insufficiency because of some cause and the cause could be tb uh, invading into adrenal space and inflaming uh, the all the tissues and destroying everything uh, it could be autoimmune okay it could be because of the uh, metastatic cancers it could be because of the metastatic cancer. it could be because of the aids okay and lastly it could be because of the long period of steroid intake and you stop it suddenly what happens is normally uh, normally our pituitary gland releases acth 
which goes into the adrenal glands producing uh, producing adrenal hormones like glucocorticoids okay suppose you are treating this patient for some autoimmune disease or anything you inject him uh, hydrocortisone and you are giving this hydrocortisone for about one one month okay one month so when you are giving from hydrogenically from outside you are giving him uh, glucocorticoid what happens is that this ACTH will be inhibited by the pituitary gland why because there is excess amount of hydrocortisone which you are injecting okay so this hydrocortisone will go and suppress the ACTH so ACTH will not produce further glucocorticoid from the adrenal gland because it does not think that you are giving him hydrocortisone from the outside it thinks that a he himself uh, generates much of the amount so that he did, uh, does not need to boost it up so after about a month okay you need uh, normally you need to taper the dose like if you are giving 100 mg taper it 75 mg and then give 50 mg the next day and then give 25 mg the next day and then uh, tape after tap, tapering of uh, a week then you just uh, stop the uh, drug hydrocortisone you do not have to stop it abruptly why because if you ab abruptly stop the hydrocortisone ACTH is not being produced by the pituitary gland so and uh, adrenal glands are not producing glucocorticoids so you have pro you have stopped the hydrocortisone from the outside and from the inside pituitary gland is not producing ACTH so in return uh, as a result what happens is there is no production of glucocorticoids from the adrenal glands okay now this is called as Edisonian crisis okay you stopped a patient uh, giving hydrocortisone and he developed a shutdown which is called as Edisonian crisis remember insufficiency occurs due to some cause like TB autonomous or metastatic cancer or AIDS okay and it occurs uh, during um, during some time okay it takes some time some months but it is only crisis crisis uh, happens within uh, within the day okay so you have to remember that you don't have to stop steroid intake abruptly okay you have to do the tapering dose so this can also uh, cause a secondary adrenal insufficiency to be made uh, more accurate it causes crisis okay look for unexplained abdominal pain or nausea vomiting Okay. and uh, then is uh, note that uh, primary adrenal insufficiency uh, Edison disease uh, will be discussed in the couple case okay I have discussed it already okay let's come to the uh, key number three.